It's time for Side Scrollers with me, Stuttering Craig. You decide what you lose, not other people. And blab. I like pickles. And co-hosted by our friends from around the internet. You like common sense? Hit that thumbs up button and of course the subscribe button and join us Monday through Friday live at 11 a.m. Central Time. And now, broadcasting from our homes, it's time for the number one gaming and entertainment podcast on God's green earth. It's time for Side Scrollers. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome on out to Side Scrollers on YouTube.com and Rumble.com and SideScrollers.locals.com. What's going on, everybody? Hi. I'm stuttering Craig. Welcome home, buddy. Let's go. Uh, good to see everybody. Happy Monday to you. It was a great week away, and uh, Flabs, way to go. Thank you. I'm really glad that I'm in producer mode again because women should be seen and not heard, so I feel so much better <laughs> not having to talk so much. Let's go. <laughs> it's just so nice. I'm just like, ha. Oh. I love it. Well, I'm glad you're here. You did a great job last week. Uh, Thank you. I popped into the very tail end of the show last week and just said, mm-hmm. great job. And I want to publicly put it out there now. Great job. You were a star. There you go. Uh, how's what it going? Stress. Uh, so much better. Like the amount of stress I had last week. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. I couldn't do anything but like try to get everything done. And then this weekend, I was like, I can sleep now. So much better. You're back. You're ready to go. All is good. <gasps> uh-huh. All is good. <laughs> Well, we got a, a great show today. We have a couple of phenomenal guests. Uh, as always, it's Monday, which means we're joined by Yellow Flat. Yo. Yo. How are you, buddy? Good. I just saw uh, Nerd Roddick did hit one million. Mm-hmm. Let's go. How great is that? I must have been huh? turning his heater on. Congratulations to him. <laughs> yeah, man. Yep. I'm just trying to see if I have a sound effect over here that, uh, nope. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the right one. There you go. Yeah. Not there you flat. go. Well, uh, how, everything going good for you, bud? Yeah, it's been a good weekend. Good. Good weekend. Good. Finally so not fun. sick. That's also a, a plus. You know, it's, it's tough because you, you have that, the tone of your voice has kind of like a, almost a sick feel to it at times, you know? Like, so when you're really sick, you can't really tell sometimes, but you you tough through it, you know? You just mm-hmm. have that natural kind of stuffiness to your voice. Did you just voice. call him nasally? No, no, no. It's actually the opposite of nasally. I would say nasally's up here. He's because like kind of like a deep, I don't know, like down here. <laughs> deep nasal. <laughs> no, I'm, still, I'm still draining. <laughs> Love that. It still sucks. Draining. I'm still draining. Hey, uh, <laughs> what the hell? You know what? That's it. It's my, I'm taking over. <laughs> Keep him out. We'll, we'll, we'll go on without him. Just kidding. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, joining us for the first time, and maybe the last time—who knows? After that, <laughs> it's Grums. Hey, Grums, how are you? Hey, how's it going, Craig? <laughs> Glad you're with us today. Sorry, you're witnessing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, well, welcome on up, man. Uh, glad you joined us. Yeah, glad to be here. It's going to be a good one. We have a, a lot, a lot going on today. Lots to, uh, lots to talk about. I leave for a week, and the, and the world explodes. Uh, just the the biggest week of video game news ever. Uh, so much, just the absolute shit hitting the fan. But uh, Vlad, <laughs> once again, excellent job. Oh, it's it's been nutty, absolutely nutty, <sighs> to say the least. Uh, it's it's been crazy. Uh, but at first, I'd like to remind everybody we are live over at rumblecom slash scrollers. Join us over there. Hit the follow button. Join the nearly six thousand common sense lovers over at rumble we also have an x account where you could have found out who's going to be on the show today you could have found out that grums is going to be on the show you could have found out that yellow flash is going to be on the show follow us over at side scroller pod we also have an instagram account don't we blabs we do i had to ask myself that last week i was like we have an instagram account don't we blabs why yes we do i had like i had headmates but yes follow us for clips and memes and whatnot on instagram there you go we also have a kick account where you can watch us every single day, Monday through Friday, if you don't want to watch us over on over on Twitch, because we're not live over there, which is great. We can find us over on kick, which is great. Uh, you can find the audio version of the show over on Spotify. So if you don't want to look at our stupid faces, um, then you can do that as well. 
Uh, you can also find us over at sidescrollers.locals.com, which is a great place to watch. Unfortunately, we're not live there today because I'm getting back in the habit and I messed up putting all the RT and P stuff in. So we're not live there today, but we will be by the time it's all said and done. I promise you that. Uh, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button. If it's your first time tuning in over here on YouTube, join the 71,100 common sense video game lovers of the uh, video game and entertainment space. Join us. Let's hit our goal of 500 likes today on my first day back after a week away. And let's do our best to hit that 25 memberships today. Can we hit it? Yes, we can. Uh, a quick reminder, we have our limited edition High Life t-shirts available. We only have 12 left, Blabs. 12 what? available until they're gone. Uh, we're going to go till the, towards the end of the month, uh, but or 12. 12 or till the yeah. end of the month. So pick up your High Life t-shirt now. over the weekend because there were 19 left on Friday. So that's awesome. So there you go. Pick up your High Life shirt. Uh, Grums, we've got to send you one of those. You, would you oh, like I'd a love High Life t-shirt? <clears throat> yeah. I mean... Uh... Let's see. I'm losing some weight. So can you can you give me three months on that? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll put one in reserve for you. It'll be great. So get, get you one of the highlight. Flash, would you like a high life shirt? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. We'll Flash, go. would you like a high life shirt? Yeah. Thanks. Mm, I don't know about that. Women should be seen that hard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so go pick up right now. It'd be really appreciated. Also, I'd like to remind you guys, um, we're, we have a, I, I posted a video. We're going to talk about this in, in a little bit. The hashtag uh, take games back. We're going to uh, be talking about that at length in uh, just a little bit. We appreciate any and all support with that. So uh, with that said, uh, starting us off, Clemson got us started with a 1999 Super Chat. Says, can we get a shirt that said, I survived Blabs Week and all I got was this crappy t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Clemson. Uh, and the answer is maybe, yeah, I uh, possibly. We'll do a limited edition run of those as well. Uh, Jeff came in and says, Craig, Blabs did great last week. She only said the N-word like five or six. It was actually only twice, okay? <laughs> I don't even want to hear about it. Uh, the Raging D-Head says, Blabs did great, so happy you're back. Blabs should do it more. Never leave again. Blabs was very objective. She went mad with power. Thanks, <laughs> the Raging D-Head. Very um, all over the place right there. <laughs> Peter came in and says, hey, Blabs, who's this Craig guy? No idea. And, and what is he doing on side scrolls? Just kidding. Welcome back, Craig. Hey, Peter, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate that. And uh, Janice came in with the $2 Canadian says, Craig, rate one to 10 Kyrie's buzzer beater game winner. Oh, yeah. Yesterday. Did you guys, did you guys watch sports at all? Grums, are you a sports guy? Not at all. I grew up overseas and, and came back here for college. And so I didn't know any of the teams or sports or anything. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. Uh, Flash, did you, do you watch uh, any sports? Yeah, I like college football, and uh, I like a little hockey. Well, yesterday uh, they had some uh, – yesterday the uh, in the NBA, the Dallas Mavericks had a game winner, and Kyrie Irving shot this, like, left-handed 3.1-foot runner shot. It was ridiculous. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, to answer your question – it was a 10 on difficulty. It was spectacular. Uh, Shane over on Rumble says, uh, found out my Apple ID got hacked while flying from Honduras and a lot of charges were made to my made on my son's iPad. If you want to steal my money, Craig, you could at least ask first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shane. Appreciate it. Blake says, I bought the new Contra game this week and it, it kicks all sorts of ass. So satisfying mowing down baddies. I hear Have you guys good. Checked, out, checked out the new Contra? I haven't yet, but I heard it's good. I saw Jeremy talking about it. I I do want to get it. We're supposed to play four player contra. It's supposed to be uh, me, Jeremy, Dan Vask, and somebody else. If Flash, if you want to you hop in, you're more than welcome. That'd be great. Um, but yeah, it, it looks pretty good, specifically on Steam. Not so much on the Switch. It looks like it has some frame rate issues and stuff. But that is this that is the uh, the world of of the Switch, I guess. Uh, Shane also came in with a. $50 Rumble Rant. That's ridiculous. Uh, Grubs, you, my friend, get to pick the color. Uh, my wall is blank, but every time we have a $50 uh, donation or higher, uh, we put a color on the wall with a sticky notepad. So we're starting off strong. Uh, you get to pick your color, Grubs. Well, what color would you like? Yellow, orange, green, red, purple, or blue? Green. No, blue. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the fairies from uh, Sleeping Beauty. Pink. Green. All right. Bentley, your first one on the wall with this new iteration right here. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate that. And oh, uh, speaking of new iterations, did you see the new um, 
the new uh, thought grift over on Twitch. Oh, with the uh, green green screen stuff on, on the butt? Her, uh, yeah, it's, so women are what? now, well, at least one is now uh, cutting the green screen shape into her ass and streaming oh, the I game that. on her ass. Pull it up, Blabs. <laughs> what? I, I, it's I don't have any vision. hate for it. I can't. It's That's very creative. Ass TV. I got to give it to her. Yeah, it is. It is very, very impressive for sure. For sure. Uh, also impressive, Shane. Look at that! Look at that! First one back on the wall. Let's go. You think I could see that on Kick Thought sometime? That'd be hysterical. Pretty there sure I go. liked somebody's tweet on it. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. <laughs> Ask TV. <laughs> your your friendly neighborhood fed came in with the ten. Says, "Welcome back, Craig. Blabs did a fantastic job hosting the show the past past week only only a few naughty words slipped through the cracks keep up the good work <laughs> but um you didn't read Bentley's rumble rant so i'll no, read didn't. it no you're yeah. just like yeah look That's at so it but you missed it so Bentley says also i want to send condolences to blabs her brazilian man budding wear wearing boyfriend lost a fall a well-fought fight just remember blabs don't go to india i won't be going to india i don't date men who have hair longer than me <laughs> but thanks <laughs> all right I can't find it. I that, you know I, what? I that's honestly comment. okay. <laughs> well, you don't see anything. It's just where her butt is. It's funny. Yeah, just it's she has well, green. How do people on. think of this? Be like, hmm. If I angle this, then I can show it on my ass and play a green screen on my ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you'll I'm, be you'd be shocked the creativity people can get when it comes to generating money, money off their ass. <laughs> Man, like, <laughs> I actually have a lot of respect for innovators of all kinds, even even innovators in the thought space. You know, I think I think these are some really creative and smart people. <laughs> it's, I, I, it's, I, I don't disagree with you at all. I actually think it's very genius. The fact that they're able to continuously morph this craft of of monetizing their butt and their tits. So it's, it's fascinating stuff. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, hey, give it up for Gypsy Pauls came in with 10 gifted memberships. That is awesome. Really appreciate that. You guys have been spectacular today. Thank you very much. Gypsy mm. Paul. Are we, are we, are we allowed to say gypsy anymore? Is that a thing? <laughs> that, that, I think so. Against that. Look at that. Going back in blue. That's great. Thank you very, thank you very much. Gypsy Pauls. You there really like, to, you know, what's weird when you say Pauls, it sounds like you said balls for a second there. Cause you're far away from the mic. So Gypsy Pauls. Balls. Gypsy Balls right all right uh we got a lot to talk about today lots to get into uh i, I appreciate all the super chats we're gonna get to those in, in just a minute uh thank you very much by the way uh Falcon says enjoyed harry potter week. Welcome <laughs> back, i didn't even talk about it i only talked about it like once and uh flash says i survived blabs week barely jk blabs did great as did true pop always mm -hmm. uh as always enjoyed being part of the show extra yes. zero you did a great job as Shout well out to true pop and extra zero for helping out with timestamps and modding and stuff Stuff. studs derby says all hail gr all all hail or hail all uh grums i check your twitter every day to help get the news flash is the greatest and craig isn't allowed to leave again <laughs> thanks derby. Uh, thank you hey what's that been like for you becoming a becoming a source of news online on twitter i mean you passed a hundred thousand followers recently and and now yep. you're, you're kind of seen as like the go-to guy for all this stuff right now uh, i picked up uh almost 20k followers in a week so that was nuts nice um it, you know, I, I, I think the news thing is definitely an angle on Twitter. I told Elon on Twitter when he first took over, right? I, I was, I didn't tell him I was, I, I've actually, you know, I tweeted at him and I said, listen, uh, the, the key to, to Twitter is citizen journalism, right? And I had this idea years ago where instead of getting our news from the top three, top three news broadcasters, that we would empower people to go report stories and be able to fact check each other and get to the first primary source. So, uh, you know, I think that's a very successful model on Twitter. If you if you want to become a news source, that definitely works. Um, and it's been interesting. I think if you were to go back and use Twitter two years ago to where it is now, I would think it would feel almost archaic. People forget about the the small changes that have been made, small but important changes that have been made to Twitter since since Musk has kind of taken over. Um, small things like the view count, um, community notes, like those oh, are yeah. small but very important things. They're huge. I mean, view count. Uh, 
you know, lets everybody know sort of the engagement of, of what you're talking about. And uh, people, I think, gravitate towards that. I think the community notes thing is a brilliant feature that has its uh, pros and cons, like everything, right? But it's a net positive where um, I think the fact checking is much more fair than saying relying on the ADL to tell you if the OK sign is a hate symbol or not. And the um, the other thing is probably the revitalization of spaces. I think that that has uh, come around and people are saying he should bring back Vine, but I don't think that Vine would necessarily suit uh, Twitter as much. I think uh, Spaces is very interesting. And I'm actually thinking about hosting a Spaces with Cabrutus sometime. We'll see how that nice. goes. Oh, man. Cabrutus is great. We've had him on the show a couple of times. He's a, he's a stud. And uh, it's, real, it's really been great to see how he's been able to... He's been thrust into the situation that he had no desire to be a part of. Right, he just made a community. Yes, like all gamers, none of we just wanted to play games. <laughs> right, that, we're gonna oh, supposed to start streaming with him on Thursdays, playing War, uh, playing Hell Divers Two. Oh, so that'll be fun. Oh I'm, wow, that's awesome. Him, I'm not me, Divers Raging yet. Rhino, and uh, that Star Wars girl are gonna. Mm, die but Anna can't get it to load yet. She oh, fixed she's been it. Able to. Okay, she got it running finally. Mm, yeah, I like it. I've only played it once, but I played it for a good chunk of time. I need to get back into it. I've only played the tutorial. That, you're gonna stream that on your ass flash? Yes. <laughs> well, speaking of ass, you know, we can I can share that now. Craig, would you like me to share the ass? Are you ready to go? Got it. Here we go. There it is. I'm rusty. <laughs> like that. I mean, honestly, it's pretty great. <laughs> it's really pretty the fact that you know what's most amazing about this is that she was able to uh, put the green screen on just enough to where you can still see the shape of her ass. Wait, isn't this the same lady who was not wearing like yes. a top? It's yes. the same chick. Yes, That's... absolutely. Ah, she's a clever one, isn't she? A little, little hoe. But, yeah. look, look at her tear. Look at her sub emote right here. Look at this. Just bouncy, bouncy, titty, titty over here. <laughs> <laughs> clever. Yeah. Yeah, she Babs, you're right. Her. How how carefully do you have to light that to get the crack? I don't know. It seems like you, it seems like with green screen, you know, you you get everything or nothing. So that's that's probably took hours to get right. <laughs> can, can you just imagine yeah. her just adjusting her green screen settings, making sure it's the right hue as she's looking back, staring at her ass, trying to make sure to get that. I mean, that's that getting that curve is very tough. Speaking it's of hard use, work, <laughs> you you break you break a new meta. You know that's hard work. I got respect for that. Speaking of views, 20 million views. Yeah. I mean, come on. That's a lot. It's insane. Also, chat, please stop sending me it and tagging me in it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Where's the URL? I'm going to tag you in it. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, everybody, don't tag at Blabbering C on Twitter. <laughs> I'm the girl. Not do it, though. It'd be so oh, funny. <laughs> there it is. I'm going to tag Blabbering. Absolutely. Card. Don't tag her. Don't do it. <laughs> Like three people already sent it to me. I'm like, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> hey, uh, give it up for Marty who came in with 10 gifted memberships. Marty, thank you very much. That is spectacular. Do me a favor. Let's get you on the wall. If you guys got gifted membership, make sure you say thanks. Consider paying it forward. Uh, most importantly, say a oh, thank you. Really appreciate that. Marty, look at that. Look at that, yeah. Marty. That's spectacular. Look at it. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Oh, what a great, great start to the show. Back at it on Monday. All right. Lady and gentlemen, it's time for my favorite segment, your favorite segment, everybody in the world's favorite segment. It's time for hard news. Hard news. All right. Here we go. We're back at it again. We got we had so much news to talk about. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to talk about the PlayStation 5. Pro, the upgrade from the PlayStation 5. Blabs, do you own a PlayStation 5? No. <laughs> Flash? That's such a silly question. <laughs> Flash, do you have a PlayStation 5? Yes. Grubs? I got it when it came out for Demon Souls. Uh, I, I, came I really have not PS5 played it party. since. What's that, Grums? I came late to the PS5 party, but I do have one, yes. I barely touch it. I think that's the issue. Is There's no games. Right, right. Yeah, like, or if they it, are, they're on PC, and I and we play yeah. on PC. My my kids and I, we we will sometimes start it on PS5, and then we switch over to to PC because we we like mouse and keyboard. 
Well, the uh, PlayStation 5 Pro is apparently going to be released this holiday. Supports 8K. <laughs> 8K. Like, it is, we even has wrong? fucking 8K. What's that? Nobody has, like, there's nothing that supports it. Yeah, yes. I was going to say, who has that? This 8K TVs, I've seen them. I've Best Buy had them. I went in there, like, last year, and they had them up. They're ridiculously priced. And it's like, why would I buy this? There's no games that support it. There's no internet video. Like, there's nothing on YouTube that supports it. None of the streaming sites support it. There's no media that supports it. What's the point? Well, we're at the point of diminishing returns is where we're at. Oh, I, I 100% agree. I think, you know, when you go back, it, obviously the leaps were considerably greater 30 years ago when you look at the, you know, the NES to Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo to N64, N64 to GameCube. We, we're at this point to where, you know, you they're just numbers to me. As somebody who's not a tech guy, I've never been a tech guy. Um, I, I look at this and I, I see that there are, 33.5 teraflops. I don't even know what the hell that means. You know, I don't either. <laughs> like, like, I don't know what a teraflop grums. Do you know what a teraflop is and why should I care about it? It's an arbit arbitrary benchmark of, of computation that started with the, the supercomputer stuff. How do you measure one, some supercomputer versus another? So it's not a reflection of actual uh, game performance, but you can take it as a general measure of overall system performance. If you just compare a teraflop number from one system to a teraflop number of another system, but it's a synthetic benchmark. Okay. So if the PlayStation 5 had 10 teraflops, and this has 33 teraflops. In theory, based off the based off the number of flops that are here. Yeah, operations per second. Yeah. Normally that's that's tied to the CPU, but in syst these systems have multi multi-core as well as uh and, and sometimes more than I don't even I don't know if the PS5 has multi-GPU cores, but it sounds like it might. Uh, we don't know the details of that, so it's it's kind of hard. It's like, which teraflops are you measuring? The CPU, the GPU combined? Are you adding them all together? Who knows? What is ray tracing? I don't even know what the hell... <laughs> I have no idea what these things are. I think that's the, been the problem with selling ray tracing to gamers is that most gamers can't really tell that ray tracing's on, you know, RTX on with NVIDIA, uh, but they know they want it because it's the latest and greatest thing. So Doesn't right. that let you, you do... see, like, reflection in windows and stuff? Yeah, so the, like, uh, you know, you have a wet street, and you've got puddles and stuff, yeah. you see accurate reflections, you see mirrors, uh, you get better lighting. But, you know, um, I, I think it's a sort of invisible feature that that just makes games look marginally better. And but uh, like I said, I think it's diminishing returns. You have to run the games in 30 frames per second on consoles to get that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the 60 frames over the fucking reflection in a window every day. It's a huge so. performance hit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't. Uh, who doesn't take that over? Like, because it's so much better. 30 frames sucks. Sucks. It... <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that That's definitely a thing. It's like everyone realizes now that that higher frame rates are, are much better. So I think, you know, this, this, this system is, is like more numbers. They're throwing more numbers at gamers. And I don't see anything here that makes a qualitative difference. I think the AI accelerator tech sounds like a buzzword they threw in at the end because I don't know how much AI you're actually going to be. I mean, in terms of modern, what we mean by modern AI, natural lang language model, sorry, uh, large language models and generative AI. Um, so I don't know. This just sounds like a buzzword to me. It, where's the gamer hook, right? Like, how's this going to make my gaming better? I think is the messaging that they really need to focus on. Well, it sounds like it's like blast processing back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Or, or the emotion. Well, what was it? Didn't PlayStation have the emotion processor or something like that too? At one point? Right. The emotion you know, engine. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They'll Man, come up with done. something. This is all, this is, this has been going on forever. 64 bits. And right. Right. It's, uh, the, you know, it's, I remember that blast processing commercial. They had the fucking Mario Kart, <laughs> the beat up van. And then what yeah, was the right. Sonic car was like a Camaro and the Mario Kart was puffering out and they couldn't make it down the, to the finish line. That was funny. <laughs> Man, 16 bit wars was great. You'll never oh, yeah. see that again ever. No, no, not at all. That was, that was definitely a once in a, once in a lifetime thing, specifically in the gaming space. I mean, there's, you know, between the, uh, 
there was there was rivalry between PlayStation and Xbox, you know, a couple generations ago, but but uh, it certainly wasn't, you know, to the point to where Nintendo you know, mm. Nintendo does what it with or what was it Sega does what Nintendo Nintendo don't right right you know they just shot these companies just tr- taking direct shots at each other which was great Crash Bandicoot showing up at the doorstep of Nintendo of America <laughs> and now uh, pl- Crash Bandicoot doesn't even have a a published they're independent now that company that owns him doesn't even have a home it's crazy why would you know, Sony not buy that I, I've never understood that like. They used him as their mascot for an entire generation. That's right. Crazy. Yeah. Mixed. mixed they, just, they just threw him into the garbage. You know, uh, the, whole, the whole thing about this being 8K, uh, 8K, um, you know, like supporting 8K. I was, I was doing some digging and I was seeing like, can our eyes actually tell if the difference is between 4K and 8K? And I, it's very, like, very arbitrary like you have to have a giant ass tv to be able to tell there's between 4k and 8k and i'm talking about like put it on a movie screen like that's how you can tell because i at a certain point it's you're, you're right grums it's just diminishing returns you got to be anyway. sitting yeah, far yeah. back too mm-hmm. you know what I, like eight you feet. know what i see when i see those numbers 8k two to three times ray tracing more graphics i see higher cost as a developer i see a lot of a lot more work, a lot more people to support the optimizations for 8K, a lot more technological breakthroughs that are needed, a lot more staff on the art staff to, to achieve all this, and and none of it towards gameplay. And I think that that's a big problem plaguing AAA budgets right now and team sizes. I'd like to see smaller teams. I'd like to see more focus on gameplay. And unfortunately, I think in the AAA space, it's... Uh, Who's ever got whoever can support these these bigger numbers better, and that's a huge expense and distraction. I think, man, it's it's honestly super refreshing to, to hear a developer say we really just want to focus in on gameplay. Like, wow, what a novel <laughs> concept! Yeah, it's amazing. Um, well, let's keep going on Sony here because not all is good in the world of Sony Land as they have paused production on the PlayStation VR two to clear backlog of unsold units, which um, I don't, you know, we've talked about VR quite extensively on the show. Grumps, what's your stance on VR? Do you think there's a future in this? Well, you know, they did this with with VR1 too. I, I had a lot of developer friends whose uh, projects were canceled because Sony got cold feet on VR, uh, at, you know, back then. And they're doing it again, it looks like. So they're getting, they, they, they keep trying and they're getting in there. And I think they got back in again because of Meta and, and the big push for VR and 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 now augmented reality there. Uh, I think with VR games, I was a huge early adopter. I I was a, a backer for the Oculus Rift, and you know, and started looking into and we started prototyping some VR stuff. But <clears throat> the one thing I realized was um, that um, it it's it's a little strange because you can't move in VR without a significant number of people getting motion sick. And so when we met with Meta and Facebook, they were like, well, uh, I think we just have to change it so that you don't walk and you just teleport around and you you have all these workarounds to that. Or you're always in sort of like a, a car or something with a cockpit frame that gives you a grounding. And that really limits what you can do with games. I'm not saying you can't make awesome games with it. I mean, look at the industry there's obviously huge mega successes in vr but it's a different type of gaming and will we ever get the true purpose of vr which is sort of like hey i want to be in an immersive world like world of warcraft and and walk around and do all that not until they solve that motion problem and even with you know recent entries uh you know apple's apple stuff isn't focused on gaming but you can look at it as sort of the the peak of the hardware state right now even they haven't solved it for their vr mode stuff so i think that's a huge barrier i think that that means that uh it's great for certain types of games it's going to be a market of itself but is it going to replace all of gaming not until that problem is solved you know you mentioned price point too i would like to point out that playstation vr 2 is 500 dollars it's the same price as the system. Yeah, but but it's a thousand I mean, dollar investment. You can always, I mean, I think it's smart to bank on stuff getting cheaper, right? Like when Gmail first launched, they were the first to promise, uh, what was it, a 
I don't know if it was a terabyte or if back in the day it was a gigabyte of storage that was free. And people said they were nuts because hard drives were so expensive back then on servers. But, you know, hardware always gets cheaper. So I think that that was a smart bet for them. Already, the Meta Quest is only 300 bucks. Yeah, I, I think I think VR costs will, you know, it will just be negligible. And, and when that happens, it'll be everywhere. But, uh, you know, are we going to get the are we going to get Sword Art Online? Uh, I wish, but no, not now. You know, you mentioned the idea of the, the, the motion problem from a developer standpoint. I, I think that's more of a human problem. I just don't know if the humans can handle handle that movement. Um, it's it's so disorienting as a as a person putting on that headset. My my biggest issue with VR has has been and will always be the closed off nature of it, right? Um, if I'm sitting on the couch at at my house, I am so immersed in that experience. I'm so closed off from my wife, my kids, it, and everything else going on. It's it's almost like gaming to me is a communal experience. And in theory, the idea is that VR is supposed to bring you together with people from all around the world while taking you away from the people who are right next to you. Well, I, I think, <laughs> Which, I think uh, it does I think that's socially. My yeah, I mean, maybe not in, in the real world, but there's stuff uh, that Apple's doing with that with Vision Pro that lets blends the two, right? So you can be present in the real world and in a virtual world at the same time. But I mean, as far as a social experience, VR chat is is huge, right? And that, that VR runs chat VR. Is. And so I think it's a great way to meet and interact with other people online, but you know, not not next to you on the couch just yet. Right, right. Do you do you have an Apple Vision Pro? Have you used that yet? No, I don't. And I and I and probably wouldn't work for me because you have to have a very specific set of eyesight requirements. And you know, I've got progressive lenses and things like that that I think that would make it uh, a little difficult. Or I have to get something custom. You know, they have to make custom lenses for you. And I, I don't know if they accommodate that yet. But mm -hmm. I, I don't have an interest in it because it's not gaming focused, right? I think it's it's much more AR and productivity focused. And it, it's and for people that are things like addicted this. to social media. I think like, that's what <laughs> all I see people do with it is they're, they're looking at their instagram and tiktok and stuff like that and well, how much is that thing isn't it like three grand like thirty five hundred dollars yeah that's that's an investment man you can get a sweet pc gaming rig for that yeah but you can't walk like water cooled and everything you can't walk around with that rig on your back doing this as you're as you're doing crosswalks as you're walking through crosswalks and, imagine and, walking um, around like new york city with that you're like asking someone to rob you Oh my God. Yeah, it's crazy. Same I'm just waiting for the first one to walk into a fountain wearing it or all those videos where they, they you know, they fall off a cliff or that type of thing. <laughs> right. They'll be going viral. It'll be so cool. Um, speaking of going viral, let's move on to our next story. As, as I was gone, the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection was released. And uh, apparently, Blabs, uh, you said it's... Uh, it's it's not so good. Well, I didn't even get to play it. I I went and bought it, and because I was so busy last week, I didn't have time to play it. I've but lo it. and lo and behold, you can't actually do all the things that they were you were supposed to be able to do. Instead of being able to house like what twenty thousand people, or whatever it is for servers, only like one hundred and sixty people can actually play the game with their friends. So it's like, well, why am I spending thirty plus dollars if I can't actually play with my friends? So fuck this, I got a refund for it because I'm not gonna play a game that isn't what you were supposed to play with so forget it sad i was it's, actually very excited for it it's worked but... fine for me i don't i press join match and it takes me right into matches every time yeah for single player it's fine but if you want to connect with friends apparently oh i haven't yeah. played with friends yet i've just yeah. played random games here mm -hmm. and there yeah so that's fine but then when you actually want to team up with your friends and the reason people were getting it is because you could have like what 62 or 64 in the lobby and yep. you can't so it's sad so in addition to kind of the server issues they've seen, uh, it, there's also a little bit of, a little bit of controversy associated with it as mm -hmm. a, uh, as a modder is claiming that the game used their work without yes. their permission. And I have so many questions about this. It seems. What? It seems like so what happened was that, um, Aspire took this modders footage and put it in the trailer. And then apparently before <laughs> even before you're like even like releasing the game, it was still in like the actual game, like the modders work. And then uh, it even says it right there, like somewhere that right before it was sold, like like some people were able to get it with the actual mod in it. So um, it says like mista Aspire mistakenly used the footage. 
But then, following the full release, players appear to have discovered evidence that prior to the very last minute patch, the game shipped with the uncredited mod work. So this guy's work is in a game. Like, they stole his work by accident. How do you accidentally steal I, someone's work? I have... That doesn't happen. You don't... I mean, I can't imagine going out and checking in to source control a mod from a third party. You know, we we used the we used third party stuff on Blizzard because it was just better in many cases. Like the character creator for Diablo 2 made by fans was better than our internal test one. So our QA department switched over to that. But that's not something that makes it into a core game, especially if they're claiming it's an accident. Um right. you know, I I you know I could see playing a mod to explore a feature and then you know adopting the best features of that mod, but implementing it yourself into the game rather than just patching it in there and how does that even get released i have no idea that's that shouldn't happen many questions but supposedly the mod is with ventress's lightsabers if i'm not mistaken it's like the lightsabers are like the biggest thing for star wars when you think star wars you think lightsabers and you stole someone's mods for lightsabers like bro <laughs> not even like ea games did that shit I'm just here's, here's one way it could happen okay game teams are huge now and it's impossible to police everyone. I mean, you're talking several hundred people spread over multiple subcontracting studios. What if some guy, some programmer, was in charge of lightsabers and really behind and didn't want to get canned because there's 17,000 <laughs> layoffs in the industry? And so, I mean, copy-paste code is everywhere. Everyone goes to, like, Stack Overflow and, and will copy code and not even know what it does and then just paste it into, into, into software these days. What if this guy took the mod to meet a deadline, shoved it in there, and nobody recognized it because they don't play the mods. I could see that happening. It's still terrible, though. Like, this guy just stole someone else's work. It was like, ah, mod perfect. Well, that's that... Rough. Okay, that that has happened. I, I That's happened at Blizzard, okay? Not a mod, mm -hmm. but um, there was a, a cinematic, uh, I think it was for Warcraft 3, that had Frostmourne, right? The blade. And the runes on the blade... You know, some artist was in charge of doing the runes on the blade, uh, literally just copied runes from Games Workshop and put them on there. And we none of us knew that. Right. And so but you've got deadlines and things and 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 probably there was no copyright awareness. Hey, it's just letters. There's no big problem with that. Well, we got a phone call. right? <laughs> and that quickly changed. But, it, you know, that does happen. Wow. Well, it, it certainly happened here. <laughs> as, as they're getting a little little pushback but now it's you know they patch it out pretty easily or or uh, address it but it's interesting to see that they that the uh some people found i guess remnants of it you said blabs yeah the, apparently like our last minute patch scrubbed it but people were still able to see it but uh i think in that article it says the reviews are what 19 percent positive on steam that's not very good <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not 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 super positive. <laughs> no, so it's it's sad because even Melanie was saying this last week that Aspire was the ones who uh, worked on the Tomb Raider remaster. So, you know, they had a lot of good stuff going for them, but what they just did was like a cash grab. And honestly, I feel like no one's surprised anymore because Star Wars is just in the gutter. That's like, oh look, this could have been great. Yet it's another thing that they just couldn't get right. Forget it. So. I can't believe it doesn't have crossplay. That's wild. Well, yeah, but not even the 2017 Battlefront 2 had crossplay from EA, which was the dumbest eh. shit ever. You can only do per console or PC. I don't I don't care about that one. Oh, I do. I care the about old, all the crossplay. So, it's the old ones that I liked. I was excited for it. I wish I wish it worked. Yeah, I was better. super excited to play with all my friends. Like finally something crossplay Star Wars related count me in because everyone's got different consoles, but now we couldn't even do that. So, I had fun it. memories playing those games back in the day. Back in the youth. Back in the day. Back in the day. That's always that's always how video games are. Video games are. Uh, you, you see, people say it all the time. They say, "I I miss this game. I miss this whatever." Yeah, you really. Did. Most people just miss that time period in their life. That's that's the nostalgia aspect of it for sure. Greg, did you ever play Battlefront? Like any Star Wars games? No, you know, I've never been a big... The, the, well, I know that. Never been, yeah, I've never been a Star Wars guy, so why would I be into the Star Wars games? I don't know. Right? You could just pick up a game, like test run it or something. But, you know, it's funny. I actually own them all on Steam. Uh, if I open up my Steam library right now, I went in and bought you know, a big old thing. Let's see, I, I have 
Jesus Christ. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, Star Wars Empire of War, Star Wars Galactic Battleground Saga, Dark Forces, Jedi Dark Forces 2, Jedi Like I own 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, probably 25 games Damn, that are Star you should Wars. Do, um, <laughs> you should do a stream one day on the Side Scrolls Plays channel. Just go through like each Star Wars game or something for your very first time. Yeah, and the fact that I never played any of these and owned them on Steam is just that's the just batshit crazy. Um, but that is that is video games today. I'm sure <laughs> everybody can look at their Steam library and be like, yeah, I never played that. Never played that. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, what's happening in uh, the video game industry right now as today launched the beginning of GDC, the Game Developers Conference. Crumbs, I would imagine you've been to a GDC or two. Yeah, I, I, I used to go to them regularly and then I stopped going when it was getting a little um, pretentious, I guess. Like, uh, it, tell us it, more. <clears throat> well, you know, it used to be a, a gathering of of game devs that when uh, it used to be much lower cost too. I think it's like almost 2,500 now, I heard, to attend, which is crazy. It was only a couple hundred bucks, you know, when it first started. And uh, it was just a time for, and it was kind of a wild time. Early GDCs were crazy. Um, and probably not politically correct you had the sweet crawl which was very famous where the hotels that were set up nearby uh would everyone would basically open up a, a kegger and a party in their suite and you'd go and meet your favorite game devs and each other just by going sweet to sweet to sweet and getting really really drunk and it was uh it, it was a blast uh, but it was a different time back then and then but then we, we then we actually had useful talks and that was the next thing that came along and that was good we had a lot of incredible you know sharing of information but at blizzard uh, we used to have a policy that we don't share any of that it was all like trade secret stuff and everything like that that's changed now and you see blizzard devs presenting stuff but the, the change of the exchange of information is really really valuable but what started happening was i think as games got popular, we started to get a different type of crowd there. Um, you know, all the good stuff is still there and still happening even now. But I think you have a crowd there that's sort of like in it for the glamour of game development. And that always was kind of off-putting to me. And um, it was almost like putting on airs in a way. Um, or, um, you know, I, I don't know how to explain it more than that. It felt insincere. There was a lot of people that maybe really didn't know game dev uh there was a lot of people who were who just wanted to be surrounded by you know devs as it, as it became popular and that's when it really started to you know sour on me and i stopped going so there's almost a, a rock star element to it to where people there's like groupies <laughs> it sounds like there's groupies in us it, it was more than that it's not just they're not you know they're attending and 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 they they really weren't developers but they were pretending to be developers it was kind mm. of like a a poser type of situation and i would say that's that's you know a minority but it was sort of like permeating everywhere and you started to get a lot of uh, what i call soft talks soft talks are you know, things that aren't really informative, uh, aren't presented by people who have done true innovation in the space or have something interesting to talk about. And it's more about talking about games for the sake of talking about game development from products that weren't very successful or were very niche. And, you know, I, I, I appreciate that they get a voice and they get to talk about what they're trying to do, Or, uh, but it, it was very low information. That's what it is. This is like, if you started looking at the talks, you got a, a, a much higher ratio of low information fluff talks and the, the, the core topics were, um, you know, were diminishing, but I, I just looked at the recent GDC schedule and I'm happy to see that there are many more co core topics. Now. I think that there's a lot of really good info coming out of GDC now. Well, one of the good, in <laughs> depends who you ask. One of the things that's coming out of GDC is diversity as uh, i'd like to thank uh dermy dermy wormy and extra zero for sending this to me over the weekend um but uh, if you were to go and you were to search for like this has been a hot topic obviously over the last few weeks and all the sweet baby stuff and and um you know you've obviously been leading the charge and all that grums as far as calling out the nonsense associated with this but if you were to search diversity on the uh, GDC session viewer over on over on their website, you would find that there there were forty two instances of diversity being being uh, diversity led panels. Um, do you think any of those are soft talks, Grums? Yeah, I, I well, I went through I went through some of them. I found nineteen 
uh, very specific ones. And diversity is a keyword I didn't try, but I could see that being mentioned in a couple of others. But as far as some of the the core 19 that I saw, uh, a lot of those did look like fluff talks to me. And that's not to say that, you know, it's like, I think it's be careful to say, hey, don't 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 be contrarian. I, I don't have a problem with diversity per se. I have a problem with tokenism. I have a problem with, uh, you know, vindictive uh, disruption of lore and characters uh, the and history for the sake of promoting an agenda. Uh, these are the things I have a problem with. But if you look at what they're talking about, a lot of it is super, super fluff. And, you know, uh, there are some audio panels that talk about, you know, uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, diversity and gender discrepancies in audio staff. And I'm like, is that really a topic? I'd really like to hear about what you're doing with the audio of your AAA game, not whether or not you you manage to hire enough men, women, or uh, Latin X on your team. You know, I, I that that to me is 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 sh sh should not be a talk led by the audio team of a game that I really want to hear about. So you're telling me that that diversity in game audio roundtable is in <laughs> 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 yeah. there's another one. There's there's two audio DEI panels I found, I think. And the other one was a, how a, do you a, make audio more diverse? Do you well, put well, Melanie you in 2. There 2. and 5.1 at the same time? Like, I don't <laughs> if you click on it, you'll you'll see the actual topic of what they cover. Um Black Lives Matter in the audio. Well, here it is. Huh? Yeah. So here's the description. Tech industries, including the video game industry, are predominantly composed of cis white male individuals. Thanks to the momentum of social movements such as Me Too, Black Lives Matter, and Stop Asian Hate, efforts to address systematic issues are increasing. Uh, but there are still plenty of work to be done. It's absolutely critical to keep these conversations going. As industry professionals with firsthand experience existing as diverse individuals in a homogeneous homogeneously dominated space this group aims to lead these vital discussions in order to facilitate lasting change the takeaway attendees attendees will gain better understanding of the issue fi facing diverse members of the game audio field they'll gain in a heightened awareness of their own unconscious bias so there it is and how to mitigate them when interacting with diverse individuals the intended audiences anyone who listen bitch now, nah, um, how is this an audio panel? <laughs> how is this? A, this should be. This is the game developers conference. This should be a panel on how to make excellent audio for games. You know, how do you get your weapon sounds? How do you get your ambient sounds? How to create in a, an ambiance, you know, to immerse you in a game. Uh, th this is this is a topic for HR. It really should have been branded an HR topic. It's absolutely amazing. And then it. and then buried. <laughs> <laughs> And then buried. Well, there you go. You can look for that uh, in the ins more insanity this week at GDC, taking place once again in San Francisco and in inside the bubble, the uh, the bubble that is San Francisco. Yeah, it's a week long affair, and I've actually asked uh, on Twitter uh, any game devs attending GDC. Uh, I'd like to know: Are these panels actually attended? Uh, there's there's 19 core ones that I found, and it looks like there's you said about 50 in total. And so far, you know, I, I I would like to know if are game devs buying into this because that's not what I'm hearing from my sources in the industry. Um, so I, I I predict these rooms are pretty small or actually kind of empty. And so that's my that's my thesis or my theory, and I'd like to get it proven one way or the other. I do have at least one volunteer so far that says they'll let they'll let me know. But with so many panels out there, if there are more people attending GDC and would like to just uh, note how many people were in the room, or actually send me a, a picture of the room, you know, no identifying faces, please, just back of the heads is fine. Uh, and some of the ridiculous slides that we're going to see, that's always great. I love pulling slides from GDC from DEI Talk because you get some doozies. Uh, please send it my way at Grums on Twitter. My DMs are open. <laughs> it's it's spectacular, really. Just absolutely spectacular. Um, so, anyways, we, I'm sure we, we'll get a lot more out of uh, GDC this week. It'll be it'll be great, and I'm sure there'll be all sorts of uh, really, really, really good um, uh, good slides to come out. I'm actually over at the uh, Take Games Back uh, Twitter handle. Uh, actually posted. Um, I wanted to pull this one up really quick. This is uh, posted reasons why um, 
why we should be taking games back. And I actually wanted to show this one. Speaking of, here it is. This is from GDC a few years ago. Let me show this really fast. This is this is kind of the uh, stuff that you get at GDC right here. This is video games are political. The way we make games is political. The way the way that we teach our students students to make games is political. <laughs> so there you go. Um, because they want it to be political. Because they want yeah. to use it to indoctrinate. Uh, oh, kids. So, uh, side shaved haircut, side of the head shave. Uh, yeah, you can tell. Yeah, of course, of course. This is from GDC 2017, by the way. So this is seven years ago. Look, point. I can guarantee you that with the events of the past week, and, and I've gotten some inside information on this too, that, that DEI departments in gaming companies are going nuts right now. They are absolutely going crazy, and they are all going to be talking, meeting and talking about this at GDC. And what's happening is DEI departments are doubling down on training, they feel like they need to have more training now that this this issues come out. There's emails going out saying there's a mandatory you know training seminar on this in, in next week after GDC. Uh, they are and, and and more. I think I don't know what the word for it is, but more concerning. There we go. Is the fact that um, Sweet Baby Inc. is not going anywhere, and what's happening is that. They are aware and publishers are aware of the bad publicity that SBI is, is creating. So they're, they're, they're not listing their games anymore on the SBI. This is what the inside baseball that they're just going underground. SBI is still in the process. No, you know, nobody's been reprimanded. Nobody's been fired from SBI for their harassment of Cabrutus um, or, or the racist and homophobic things they've said in the past or even today. Uh, this is just going underground. And publishers are not axing SBI. They're just being very, very quiet about it. And DEI departments are taking this as an opportunity to say, oh, look, there's super harassment in the gaming industry. No, it was it was SBI. No, 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 no. No, we're going to use this to to have even more of a kind of a, a indoctrination lockdown in gaming studios. And I think a lot of devs, the majority of devs just don't care and they just want to make great games. Uh, but the studio atmosphere is really, really toxic right now in terms of that. And I think it's uh, going to get worse as these guys and gals from DEI departments get together, you know, and, and then they get together at GDC. And that's where the planning happens of what they're going to do in response. And you're going to see the industry response, I think, in, in a couple of weeks here. Well, you know, it's funny because we've been talking about this. This actually flows perfectly into into kind of what what I announced over on Twitter today. So let's let's talk about that. The idea of um, you know the industry being hijacked in response to that, and we are you know we do this show every day. We talk about games and and everything that's involved in games on a day to day basis, whether it's you know teraflops or or, or how the U.S. government is interested in in uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> talking about gamers being bad and blah, 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 blah. But uh, I announced this today over on Twitter, and so far the response has been been really strong. And, and um, I, I think, you know, rightfully so. Um, and that is the idea that we have to take games back. So I want to play the video real quick, uh, and then then we'll talk about this. Uh, but I think this is actually really important. Then um, Grums and Flash, uh, I want to open it up to you guys and, and hear your thoughts on this. If there's one thing that's become painfully clear over the last couple of weeks, it's that the people who work in this industry and write about this industry that you love hate you. It's one big club and you are not in it. In fact, did you know that the Game Awards are voted on by those exact same people? I mean, look at this list. It's IGN and Polygon and Variety, for God's sakes. It's an elitist, outdated system, and it's had way too much sway in the video game industry for way too long. I've been talking about video games online for almost two decades now and been playing games like longer than that, but I have never seen the video game industry this toxic. It is time to get our voice back. Now, look, I'm not telling you I got this whole idea mapped out because I don't. I don't even have a name for this yet, but it's become painfully obvious that this is very much needed. Year after year, over and over again, after the Game Awards, people say there has to be a real award show for gamers. Well, let's do it. This is the first step to creating a club or a group where you decide the winners and losers of the video game industry. A club where you get to decide the categories, the nominees for the categories, and of course, vote on them. And it'll all be done through an app where you can do it easily and securely. So is this club free? Nope, absolutely not. 
Why? As we've seen over the last few years, our hobby has been hijacked by activists looking to push their own agenda and literally push you out. For that reason alone, there has to be a barrier of entry to be a part of this club. Hell yes, we're gonna gatekeep. We should have been gatekeeping much longer. But here's my vision. With your support, we'll number one, be able to make the app, and number two, be able to create a physical award show that you'll be able to attend, guess what, with the app serving as your ticket. My vision for this also has a board of directors to help oversee things, but there are strict rules to be involved with the board. One, they're not allowed to vote. Two, they're not allowed to be on any press list or receive any free video games and or perks from any AAA publishers. And three, and most importantly, they are not allowed to be employed by traditional gaming media. Hey man, I get it. Video games are a mess right now. The industry you love doesn't want you and the traditional media hates you. And that's why it's time to take games back. So go to takegamesback.com and become a member and help grow this community and help regain our voice. It's now or never. All right, so uh, posted that over on uh, over on Twitter earlier, and um, you know, pretty much worked on this all weekend. This is one of those things where, as I was gone, I was looking at all the chaos that was happening, um, and I was really inspired. And I, I mentioned this before; we we talk about this on a day to day basis. But I'm a dude who likes to act. I'm, I'm a big guy, big big fan of action, and I um, actually doing shit and. We've seen all the stuff with, um, you know, Sweet Baby Inc. and all the nonsense that's gone along with that. And then it like dawned on me that all these people at Kotaku and Polygon and all the, you know, these are people who are who are deciding on the games that are the best of the year. And I was like, that's fucked up. Well, how come the gamers don't? So let's do something about it. And the idea being that we will eventually have a, you know, an, an award show of some, some some sort that is voted on by by gamers. That is, uh, it's you know, done through a club. Um, and I don't know. I'd love to hear your, hear your thoughts on that, Grums. Well, awards awards have always been gamed. I mean, best of E three and uh, the ESA uh, software awards for games. Uh, those were always gamed by the industry. And at Blizzard, we would never win those awards. <laughs> You know, we, right. we would have we would have the best games at that time, and and we would when we we didn't care that we didn't get best of E three or best of this because we knew it was a scam, and it was a scam because you know what happens. I'll tell you how it works: is uh, a large company, a large publisher, will basically enroll everybody into ESA so that they're eligible to vote, pay for their enrollment, and then they send out uh, company emails uh, saying, "Hey, it's time to vote," and you know what to vote for. And they'll give you the form and you just check the box of your own game. That's how it works. And that's refreshing that finally you're doing something where gamers get to vote. And I think that's great. I think that uh, we really need more of that, especially in a time where actually, you know, remember when you could leave reviews on Netflix and, you, and they took ratings away? Uh, they're taking away consumer voices from ratings uh, and they they claim it's because it's gamed, but you know there's ways to fix that, and they just don't care. They just don't want heat from companies saying, "Why is my movie? Why is my game only getting two out of five stars? Fix it now!" And you can see that on uh, you know sites like Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic and stuff like that. That that sort of corruption is rampant. So yay for that. Good on Rot you. Rotten Tomatoes has went even further with it and changed it to verified in all audience. I noticed that today with the American Society of Magical Negroes in the in the all audience spot or the verified audience, it's at sixty five percent, so it's actually fresh. But if you click all audience, it's like thirty percent. Right. So they hide the actual one now and put the verified one up first. Uh, of the dozens of people who have seen it, right? <laughs> I Which heard is... people were walking out of the movie. Yeah, but um. You know, this is something that for me, I, I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate about the idea of like, for me, this is more than a, an award show, right? The it, it, an awards people are like, ah, it's an award, it's awards, right? But you see, like the game awards, I, I think to be very clear, I think what what Jeff Keeley has done with the game awards is is really admirable, but it's still voted on by the wrong people. It's right now, it's it's more or less the game journalist award. Uh, where they have this 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 crew of uh, traditional games media that that vote on it, but where does it where does it come from? Where does the voice of the actual gamer come from when it comes to these things? The, these so that's really important to me. Um, so I you know I made a rinky dink website 
um, called, you know, that it's actually just takegamesback.com and which you guys can go to right now. And if you guys want to become a member of it, awesome. If you don't, that's cool too. If you want to wait and see, that's cool too. But the idea here, people like been critical of the pricing, right? And think of this like um, people say, well, you know, like uh, this is actually pretty cool. I, I actually want to want to do with the actual award show. And if you become a member of that, you that's like included in your ticket. But um, I, I mentioned this before, but I've done live events and the most recent live event I did was, you know, was uh, SGC, which we had 15,000 people at it. And that was 10 years ago. And that still cost a quarter million dollars to do. Um, and we didn't make any money on it, right? They're events hugely are, expensive. Events are extremely expensive, extremely expensive. Well, so BlizzCon never turned a profit. No, of course not. None of the, it's all marketing. It's all marketing. So people are like, oh man, like people will naturally, those, oh, it's a scam. It's a scam. But like I, you know, my 20 years on the internet, you know, I've never been involved in any of that bullshit before and I, and I never will be. Um, but this is not a money making thing for me. There's, there, I have no intention of making any money from this venture. What I, what I, this is about passion and, and providing that voice back to, back to the gamers, which has been sucked away over the last few years. It's, it's amazing. We live in this society uh, where we have all this technology. We have, we have Twitter, social media, um, that allows everybody to have a voice while sometimes, you know, the people who, uh, I said this a decade ago and I, and I stand by this now, some, some of the people who have a voice shouldn't have a voice. And sometimes those people who have a voice that shouldn't have a voice have the loudest voice. And, um, right now the voice of the journalist and, uh, is, is way too loud, way too loud. And we've been saying they're obsolete. Well, let's show them they're fucking obsolete. Let's actually do something about it. So anyways, this is the plan. It's it's a long-term thing. Um, you know, I'm hopefully it can get off the ground. Um, we appreciate any and all support on it. Um, I, I'm not going to tell you I have everything figured out. I don't. But uh, I want to be transparent about it. You know, I, I think this would be a really great first step as far as, um, you know, doing an annual award show. But I actually think it'd be really fun to do uh, monthly awards. I do Game of the Month awards. I, I go back to like Nintendo Power. And we remember going back and looking at Nintendo Power and seeing like the top rated games for that month. I think that'd be really, really fun that. to do, um, you know, to whatever the top game is. And, you know, hell, guess what? You know, uh, Helldivers has been the top game for three months or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. I think that's, uh, that's Link pretty to the pretty past funny. was up there for years. <laughs> right. <laughs> I right. remember that. I loved Nintendo Power, man. I read it every month. Yes. Yes. So. Uh, I say it all the time. If you got a goal, go get it. Well, this is the first step in going to get it. And the first step of, uh, of giving you guys a voice back, giving us a voice back, um, and hopefully reclaiming some of that voice. So we'll kind of see, see what comes of this and, uh, you know, but appreciate any and all support with it. So, um, I, th I think yeah, you should add a, I think you should add a monthly revenue stream to it. So if people want to support the project, and they could they could get like uh you, you know you could mail them certified stickers to slap on their games or whatever <laughs> right. something something return for for being a, a a patron on a monthly basis to support this type of effort because i think that sort of continuous support is really important for efforts like this i, I agree and the biggest thing with from a month-to-month -month issue and all feedback is welcome and appreciated but the biggest thing is i don't want I don't want a slew of people coming in a month before and then canceling, getting their vote in and then getting out and, and skewing votes. So um, I don't think you get it by vote because you want to let all gamers vote, right? Right. Uh, right. So, or, or do they do they join the organization in order to vote? How does it work? Yes, that's the idea is they join and join to vote. Right. Yeah. And, uh, so so I think the monthly wouldn't wouldn't gate that any further. I think the monthly is just like a just a general. Hey, thanks for your support type of thing. And and here's a few. You know, you get to be put on the, a list of, you know, uh, of, of subscribers that we we post here and there. Uh, because what you're doing is you're not buying a product. It's not transactional. You're, you're supporting a movement. And I think that there's, there's value in that. And there's, there's a lot of people who would support that. So like I have, uh, and it's great to hear that. So one of the, uh, like the, the smallest tier is like $15 a year. So you think that like putting it at like two bucks a month, you know, like, or, or you know, two, yeah. three bucks a month, like, and Why you not? Think that's fair. Yeah. 
and you know, and obviously there's there, you, you can't send them plushies every month for doing that, but you can you can have acknowledgement, you can have special tags uh, on your forums or chat or whatever. I think people just want to get involved in whatever way they can. And even if they can't do 15 bucks, they can do one or two. And over time, that adds up to a lot more. Cool. I think that's great. Well, I, I love it. Love it. Um, uh, Mercenary says, can I get a link to the website? Just go to takegamesback.com. I will uh, strongly consider that. I appreciate that, Grumps. That's great. Um, for sure. Well, I appreciate that greatly. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Once again, if anybody has any questions on that, please hit me up um, when it comes to uh, over, over on social media, whatever, at Stuttering Craig. All right, let's go over here. Uh, this was this was posted by uh, this guy named Grums over on over on X. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is uh, oh that guy. Yes, oh that guy it says if you want us. Well, I'll tell you. I'll let you read it in your voice as opposed to me reading it in your voice. All right. Oh. If you want to see what they are trying to hide today, Madam Savvy has done the most research and put together a video that you should watch. Looks like these government funded programs led by the same connections of people are targeting gamers possibly for their influence on elections what the fuck <laughs> so, oh i'm sorry can i say that <laughs> yes, you, i just get whatever the fuck you want so, yes uh, uh so this is crazy yeah i have no idea what's going on but it's breaking and it's something we should be paying close attention to well, so there's a three minute, 30, uh, three minute, 30 second video, and I, I think it's worth a watch. So let's go ahead and watch it here. And, uh, and at any point, if y'all want me to stop it, just say stop and, and you can provide whatever uh, thoughts you want. Okay. And refreshing. Oh. That's the problem with Twitter. Elon, get on it. Come on. Come on now. We got to work on our, our video here, which is, which is rough. Here we go. Okay. Let's. I know my threads are dry, so it's video and visual aid time. All information can be found on my X page through a series of three threads at the time of making this. All sources are linked, and it is based off of publicly available information. This all started because a Sweet Baby Inc. employee attempted a harassment campaign against a Brazilian man who goes by Cabrutas, who made a curation list on Steam with publicly available information documenting the games that SBI has worked on. Alyssa wrote an article oh. for Kotaku defending SBI and omitting information about how it started. I think that's the biggest issue with this whole thing to me is the idea that they haven't like they haven't even thought about including that aspect of the story. Like it's been it's been a non-starter. At no point have they put any sort of retraction or note that says anything about well, you know, this is how it started and uh, that that's insane to me. And that's it, the, the, it's a lie by omission. It's deliberate. And when I confronted these reporters about it, they said we're not going to answer that. Right. Well, well, who did you confront about that? Uh, Aly Alyssa specifically. Okay. I said, uh, here, here, you know, why, why did you do these things and why did you not mention this? And uh, are you going to answer the questions? And she's like, nope, smiley face. And then I pressed her again because she was trying to bait me into saying something that she could use as, as material. See the, the harassment I'm getting. But I said, I'm not taking your bait. I'm just asking questions ga all gamers want to know. And she's, she flipped out. She's like, you're not the boss of me. I don't have to answer your questions. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> they, it's, she it's has amazing. a mental disorder. Oh, Most of them do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally broken. Totally broken. It's almost a requirement for games journalists. I think. <laughs> Must have <laughs> spatisms. Check. <laughs> well, let's let's continue here. Claiming it was a harassment campaign against SBI, Dr. Cowart wrote a blog post through Take This Org linking the Kotaku article. On the Take This Org website, they occasionally state they are funded by DHS. Take This Org has a partnership with Middlebury College and Logically AI, a data scraping and they company have a panel at GDC. Well, of course. Yeah, take of two. Course take, take, not take two. Take this as a panel going on. I'd it's like amazing. to see how many people were in the room. Probably like five people. <laughs> I guess we'll see, won't we? Hopefully, yeah. Ho hopefully we get some insight. Insight. There, there's got to be some, um, some like Project Veritas style reporters going to GDC this year and, and doing some, getting some scoops on this stuff. I think that would be they, smart. Yeah, 100%. By the way, uh, if anybody, and, and this is to be fully transparent, if anybody is going to, to GDC, 
I, I put this out on Twitter last week, but if anybody is going to GDC and you'd like to do some reporting for us, possibly get some interviews, reach out to me directly. I will gladly compensate you for it. Continue. So what you're going to see about Madam Savvy's video is that Dr. Clowert here has it, you know, connections to multiple of these organizations, and they've raised well over a million dollars uh, so far to fund this research. But let, let's watch some more. Yes, let's watch more. Redefine the fact-checking business. They are a British-born company who use AI to monitor election misinformation and had a hand in the 2020 USA election. As of two years ago, they are partnered with Facebook as a fact-checker. They are also India's number one fact-checker, according to Wiki. These three entities received $669,000 from a DHS grant for a two-year research project to monitor extremism and terrorist recruitment through gaming communities. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? It's a good question. Yeah, I, I think it, 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 all these groups target either terrorism or election interference, which is very creepy. Uh, first of all, gamers aren't terrorists. And, you know, and and also, why should we care which way gamers vote? It's their vote, right? So I don't understand why this concerted effort. I mean, I have some suspicions, but it's very, very strange. Hmm. But Take This Org is not directly funded through DHS itself. Dr. Coward is also part of the Extremism and Gaming Research Network, or EGRN for short. They, together with the Royal United Services Institute, received 317,000 Canadian from the Minister of Public Safety of Canada. Several of the EGRN individuals currently work for Russi and have since 2021. Through EGRN and its many members, there are current connections to policy advisory around the world and extremist research through the lens of gender studies. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> <laughs> extremist research through the lens of gender studies. Yeah, they're like, they're at the central hub here. EGRN has connections to a lot of these groups. It it, it just interesting. Like, at, at a and they point, and they recently scrubbed their website just yes. yesterday or was it today? Yeah, either yes today or yesterday. Another oh. one did too that uh, uh I forget the name of it. I was looking at that on Twitter this morning. There was another of uh, one of these sites that scrubbed their stuff. I think you're going to see a lot of them do that. Mm. Well, well, we'll get to that in just a minute. Here we go. Let's continue. The co-founder says he's got current ties to the UN. Another member has spoken to the Affairs Select oh, Committee wow. and Intelligence yeah. and Security Committee of Parliament. Another has spoken to the White House and several of them to DHS and more. And the EGRN's first By the way, extremism it, it, and political... Department of Homeland Security, right? Let's, <laughs> I don't know if many people just hear DHS and they think health services or something, but that's, no, we're talking U.S., you know, um, terrorism specialists. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. just, just, it's literally laughable to hear that. We're talking about terrorist specialists dealing with gamers. <laughs> they must <laughs> be like, watching like all these Call of Duty Truly, games. we are the most oppressed. Yeah. yeah, they're watching all these Call of Duty games, and anytime someone's throwing a grenade at like a minority or something, like, aha, uh -huh, potential terrorist. Because like, oh. what else is there? <laughs> Let's continue. Political movements and gaming communities. This was through Brazil. Ties to their government exist and may be ongoing. EGRN has individuals who currently work and who are employed with GIFCT, which is the Global Internet Forum to Counter Terrorism, which was started by Facebook, YouTube, Microsoft, and Twitter back in 2017. There are individuals tied to ISD, which is the Institute of Strategic Dialogue in Britain, where they state there is urgent need to build community trust and political consensus around extremism. Pre-existing ties exist through the EGRN to the World Bank, Facebook, various counterterrorism organizations, UNICEF India, and various other organizations with political ties. The ADL has a Belfer Fellow Funding Program, which is a program that advances the ADL's work by supporting groundbreaking research into online hate and harassment and implementing these projects to fight for just, equitable online spaces. Just, equitable, online spaces. Well, I think they define terrorism as any or extremism as anything that's not DEI, right? Or if you if you say anything against DEI and what it's doing to entertainment. So I think you have a broadening of the definition. Uh, but what's maybe a little Trojan horse here is that uh, you're talking about the majority of the world population, m most of whom play games. So you're talking about monitoring most of uh you know humanity here so that's interesting well uh, if 
that's <laughs> the, all this whole thing is a Trojan horse. Everything about this is a Trojan horse. Like it's, it's a uh, very Patriot act ish. Oh, <laughs> it's like surveillance. You, yes. Oh my gosh. That's just a legitimately scary shit. In 2021, one of the EGRN members was a receiving member of the fund. The ADL itself on the website states that they will work with them to advance their research into online extremism. The ADL has come out recently as well, using the exact same language as these groups, taking interest in extremism through video games. My research has only begun in every paper I read. I find a new connection to draw to. This is only taking into account a few members of the EGRN, so I am certain there will be more to discover. This is the fastest summary I can come up with for now, so please check out my threads on Apple. All right. Man, can I just say that, that that I really love how she used the meme with the strings and the post-it notes on the wall. I, I <laughs> thought that was brilliant. It, it is. It, and it plays it together very nicely. I mean, it's a very good visual representation of, of everything. Um, but yeah, this is this is uh, some messy stuff. And I don't really know what to say outside of like, <laughs> like well, they, you know, all, they all came at the same time. All the announcements came, uh, including the ADL's announce, uh, call for, you know, more investigating into gamers. Uh, all of this happened a week after a week and a half after Sweet Baby within within a week of each other. And the timing is super suspicious. You can't throw together a deal that fast. So, you know. I think people are rightly speculating that this stuff has always been around or been around for a little while, but they're all sort of getting very loud about it right now. And I think they regret getting loud because after Madam Savvy pointed out some of the connected people here, I retweeted that. And hey, now the websites are scrubbed. All the people involved with these initiatives have been erased. Right. And uh, it goes to Cabrutus over here talking about this. Uh, it says something's brewing there. Scrubbing numerous pages correlated to the government involvement, if possible, please share them. So uh, we are. This is what it looks like now over here on their website. You get a nice error 404 oh, going from the link. And uh, this is what it looked like before. So here we are. The uh, about our membership and kind of goes into deep, deep dive here. You wonder, um, you wonder why they would do this, why they would, why they would want to scrub things so quickly. It's, uh, yep. And you, have you ever thought about how they're going to do this? Like, let's let's think about that. Like, what are the, what's the implication? Millions of dollars going to these institutions that are supposed to study and monitor extremism in gaming. So that means what? Infiltrating Discord servers like Kotaku, <laughs> or <laughs> right. uh, you well, know? But got I can... the one going into Roblox. Well, you see that yeah. one. Oh, tell me about that one. I've got some stuff too, but tell me about That's that. That's all one. in that FBI report from what was that website, the Lancet or something? I could pull up the article. Hold on. Yeah, well, please, what, please. What, do. what are they doing? Yeah. Yeah. What think, were you going to say though? You said you had some. Yeah. So uh, I could tell you that um, in in certain regions of the world, even uh, you know, back in the WoW days, uh, require us to log all chat. And, and probably voice comms now too. So um, in the Korean government required this, right, for police reports. And it was actually because they the, the, the Korean police take virtual crime very seriously. If you steal a virtual item in the game, they will. you can actually report it and you can actually be arrested for it. And, and if you scam someone and, and they'll go after you. So we were required to maintain all of that chat uh, on our servers. And, and of course, you know, you, I th was it Overwatch that said they're going to start monitoring all invoice commit comms as well? I can't remember, but this is a thing. All this stuff's being recorded. All of it's being stored now. And a lot of it is government requirements. And now you have government groups that are going to be monitoring this. That means they're going to have access to that data through these partnerships. I just posted it. Okay. Sounds chat. good. Let's, let's check it out. Let's see what we got here. Uh, this is just absolutely. Yes. Here we go. The, uh, Tip Blabs, read the first two paragraphs. That's all the most relevant information. Blabs, you want to pull it up? Uh, I can, yeah. Hang on. I got it. I'm okay. already on it. Let's go. Uh, headline, the feds are coming for, quote, extremist gamers. And the date, of March 9th, 2024. Just one. Yep. Right around the corner. Uh, are in a dialogue with Roblox, Discord, Reddit, and others. 
All right, Blabs, go ahead and read that nice and loud for everybody because I because I can't read. You know that. All right. Gaming companies are coordinating with the FBI and Department of Homeland Security to root out so-called domestic violent extremist content, according to a new government report. Noting that mechanisms have been established with social media companies to police extremism, the report recommends that national security agencies establish new and similar processes with the vast gaming industry. The exact nature of the cooperation between federal agencies and video game companies, which has not been previously reported, is detailed in a new Government Accountability Office report. The report draws on interviews conducted with five gaming and social media companies, including Roblox, an online gaming platform, Discord, a social media app commonly used by gamers, Reddit, as well as a game publisher and social media company that asked the GAO to remain anonymous. Now, the Discord thing is important because, as they put there, gamers use that for party chats yeah that's wild. quite a bit yeah let me keep going class should she keep going should she keep going uh no nah, you don't have to go through the whole thing cool. that's that's kind of the gist of it right there but yeah they want to monitor monitor what you're saying god knows we're probably on the on the radar just talking well, about it. in massachusetts know? they just pro they, didn't they just prosecute some eight-year-olds for hate speech in in their in their in their chat room eight-year-olds no, Yes, that was crazy. So if, if they're going after eight year olds, uh, they're they're definitely going to be thinking about game room chats and whatever smack talk you're doing there. Uh, and apparently, you know what these kids were doing, were talking about having a mock slave auction or something like that. So it was it was it was offensive for sure. But, mm -hmm. you know, should you should you be prosecuting eight, eight year olds? for That's this? wild. Or eighth graders, eight graders, not eight year olds. Right. Eighth graders. Okay, so they're 13. Right. Yeah. So they're so they're dumbass 13 year old kids. Right. Who are who are looking to like. I, th this whole idea of like offensive language is just fascinating to me as nowadays you have guys who are previous shock jocks like Howard Stern, who are so pussified, uh, who if you were to go back and look at their look at their catalog or, or their content from 20, 30 years ago. They would be seen as the most racist, homophobic, bigoted people in the world. And it was just seen as humor then. But is that is, is that the problem? Is that was humor back then? Like it is blazing saddle. Should everybody be prosecuted for their work on blazing saddles in, in 1971 or whatever it was when that movie was released? <laughs> I love that movie. Ah, it's, it's a good one. Yeah, yeah it's I mean, a good one. Going back in time and canceling people for for a different time and what they said then I think is is ridiculous, and uh, and I think thought crimes are ridiculous. And you know the the listen this is this is serious. Okay, this is really serious. They are that means there's going to be active monitoring and there's already active monitoring. I've told you. About oh yeah, this has uh, been going on for a minute. There was a uh, somebody had an article. I, I can't remember the name of it. I could find it if you give me a little bit. But it was like. Uh, in 2022, they were talking about uh, investigating lore people for video gaming, like oh, yeah, the lore of a game. Yeah. Insane, man. Like, this is this is crazy shit. This is like 1984 shit. I, I think gamers have to be on their toes. You know, it's like uh, the, your Discord chat is going to be monitored. Sorry. It's just the way that it works now. Uh, you, you know, whatever you say, even anonymously, is going to be investigated. I can I can bet you that you know Cabrutus and I and 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 Madam Savvy are on a list from these groups just for you know helping to expose them and highlight the issue. Uh, you guys are probably all on the list now too. So congratulations. <laughs> I have to do uh, taxes, so they they have my docs. <laughs> I'm 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 going to move to Malaysia and. <laughs> or, or whatever i'm gonna move to vietnam or something or just just get out uh, they'll, they'll still find me it's okay i already I figured that there's an fbi guy watching my camera i think i named him leroy or something like that hey man you know i would much rather have communist china social credit s s score system with clear rules and clear here's what we're watching don't do this here than what we have in western countries which is this nebulous spying and an ever-shifting standard of what you can and can't say that changes every week i would i would rather go full commie than to have what we have now i think what we have is far more incestuous and dangerous i think when it comes to yeah there's so much gray 
so much gray and people people go back to like the the patriot act and stuff specifically in 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 the united states i feel like you you hear about oh the patriot act patriot act blah blah, blah. It, it 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 costs so much bad well, when is somebody going to go and be like well we should probably repeal the patriot act well it's never it's but it's never going to happen like it's a good idea yeah, in theory never. but it's never going to happen because there's too many jobs associated with it it says it it foregoes too much power and like when people look back on it that's that's where it started Probably started more, but whatever. Uh, long before that, so it's just fucking messy. <laughs> God, it's messy. Ah, uh, God. Um, I do want to go back to Cabrutus because Cabrutus has been, um, um, you know, the the central point of a lot of this stuff, and you know, not by his choice, he's been the one thrust into all this. But apparently, our friend Alyssa Mercante uh, actually did an interview over the over the weekend or over the past few weeks uh, with with a website or with a YouTube channel or something uh, that, that got literally dozens of views, which was great. Congratulations, Alyssa. You're really getting the word out. Wait, uh, just dozens of views. That's it. Well, it, most of it came from Cabrutus linking to it. So I would like to, once again, you probably got more on views on her only fans. Didn't she, wasn't she a cam model at one point? She tweeted that. That, that thing was an OF for who? For she, the, she, she tweeted something about how she was positive about sex work because she used to be a cam operator. That probably got more views. She's in the gym a lot, so you know, probably feel like those muscle mommies. <laughs> but she still has that face. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> I mean, there's a whatever, woman I'm that was <laughs> the, never underestimate the power of the simp. There's a That's there's true. a woman that lives her life as a dog. That I was saw on that. The, something posted, and there's men lining up for her. She has handlers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what she calls her boyfriends. Friday. So <laughs> if there's fucking weirdos lining up for that woman, I'm sure that Alyssa chick is getting some dudes too. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> well, uh, she did do an interview and good on her. Um, but I would like to invite her once again to come on the show. She's welcome anytime, uh, but she won't. This is, and I, I tweeted this out also, just the idea that while I was gone, I was getting caught up and I saw she did that interview and it, it be, it's become so painfully obvious that she has no interest in her at Kotaku, her at Sweet Baby. None of them have any interest at all of going outside of their ecosphere. They are so petrified of, of just not uh, of, of, of having any sort of pushback, which Grums, you've seen. Um I, I tweeted this out. I said, getting caught up on Sweet Baby Inc. Kotaku stuff over the last week. What's most amazing is that no one from Kotaku or Sweet Baby Inc. is willing to have a conversation with a single person that will change their perspective. They only want to talk to safe spaces. How pathetic. Uh, I stand by that. And the invite is still open. If you'd like to come on, Alyssa, whether it's live or whether it's taped, we will gladly do it. If you want it to be on Kotaku, whatever. I doesn't even need to be on this show. We will do it on your terms, on your outlet, whatever. But I think it's important for you to uh to actually receive some pushback and, and actually answer some questions because you as a journalist uh have failed you have failed because you as a journalist the number one rule of journalism is not to make yourself the story and you've made yourself the story so you failed as a journalist so you should answer for that because you become the story so it's time you know and you can call me a chud all you want or a right-wing extremist okay yeah okay yeah sure uh welcome to the club um, but the reality is that you still need to answer questions or you're just a giant chicken shit. And that's the reality of it. You're a giant chicken shit that doesn't matter. And I mean that sincerely. And you won't matter. Just give it a couple months. Kotaku's going down. Like they call they call us chuds, but I like to call them what Melanie Mac says. You know, the famous the, the Melanie Mac word. <laughs> oh, really? What's that word? I don't think no, I could oh, I'm not gonna say that, it on your channel. Oh, that word. The film guild <laughs> <laughs> oh man um but yeah that's the reality of it so uh but they they did this interview and uh i know we're running up on time but i didn't want to hit on this really quick cabrutus came out and said uh kind of kind of pushing back on some of the things that were said in the interview it says i was informed by a member of my handsome community <laughs> that uh she went on she went on uh, this interview and more or less ga gaslit the entire the entire time while she was on it uh, it was it was one of those things where it's like, you know, uh, 
you, you punch somebody and then you stand back and you go, what are you talking about? I didn't do it. You know? And why would the, you be mad about this? Right. And the, uh, the interviewers who like, they didn't even ask. They didn't even ask the most basic question. Why did this start? That's it. That's the, the question you ask. Every, why? Always why? Why? Why did you feel the need to do this? Why did you feel the need to infiltrate infiltrate uh, this, this Discord server? Uh, what pushed you to that? No, no, no. Judge, 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 judge. It's like, fuck off. You know, like you, you're that goes beyond a softball interview. That's an actual filtration of questions to, 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 you know, basically avoid the truth. Of course, because once again, it goes back to, they want to live in their bubble and, uh, who, who and interviewed her? Avoid the, avoid the, you know. Oh, it was called the blurred without fear. Wasn't it? Oh, that guy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, he's a big old leftist too. Yeah, he he's like pronouns and bio, everything yeah. that you would think fits a checklist. He he's that. So, like going on, he's tried there to get was my huge safe space. He's tried to get my attention before. I've seen that guy around. He's a nobody. Yeah. So right. he did an interview, right? So let me see. There's a anti-diversity crowd exposed with Alyssa Mercante, Nerds of Culture, number 16. Three days ago, only 5.1K views. So it's not like this interview went anywhere. At right. All. Of course not. And, you know, you got to imagine that they're, uh, um, that the, uh, that the thumbs up, thumbs down ratio is, uh, Pretty spectacular. Yeah, it's pr pretty bad. Oh, yeah, it's a two to one ratio. Thumbs yeah, down. Yeah, and they're getting like she's trying, though. The chat in the comments. She's, she's trying to get the word out. I haven't heard from some of the other writers have gone underground, like Harvey Randall from PC Gamer, who wrote the, uh, you know, a company's called Sweet Baby Inc. has been the target of anti woke gamers because it offers consultancy work and industry standard service that has been normal for years. <laughs> what happened to this guy? I want to hear more about these other people, and they all have pronouns in their bios. Yes, you know, every time. Uh, yeah, and and they all went immediately protected after after putting these out, and they all cried harassment. But you know, I think, uh, hey, uh, props to Alyssa. She's gotten the most visibility out of this out of all of them. So there's, you know, there's there's some PR work there going on. Oh, she knows what she's doing for sure. For and sure. the, all the comments in this interview are like just shitting all over Alyssa and these YouTubers blurred without a fear. They're just like completely taking it down. And supposedly a lot of comments are being deleted. So surprise, well, surprise. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. What do you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Meta you know, the, says, oh, oh I'm ahead. sorry. The, the other thing that really strikes me is that, you know, I, I've said, hey, we're talking about Alyssa, but please don't harass her. Ask questions like a reporter yes, would. Like but that's reporter. harassment. And, uh, but you know, we're always the ones calling for that and they never do. I've never heard one of them say, Hey, don't harass gamers because you know, most of them are good. Uh, you never hear it the other direction. And that but is you, very telling. In my just opinion. asking them the questions though is harassment. Yeah, it's triggering to them. That's, yeah, that's what, that's that's the what they define as harassment. Yeah. Yeah. And right. when they don't get actual harassment, they always make it up. How dare time. you not just take my word for it. Yes, asking questions is not harassment. That's you're 100 right. Metastep says they called Krog a chud. They misspelled Chad. There you go. Thanks, Metastep. Appreciate that. Um, Crit Nature says it's not about surveillance because the NSA does it anyways. It's about uh, it's about to stay. It's about stay in control because they are aware the paradigm is shifting these days. Thanks, Crit. I Nature. think it's I think it's the elections. I think they realize that that um, gaming groups and the and where the you know the whole gg1 stuff exposed a lot of the stuff in gaming journalism and it eventually led to the whole hey w we have largely fake news right and i think there's a direct correlation there and media experts definitely see that correlation and they don't want any sort of groundswell happening here in gaming so i think that's why you see election monitoring groups in in this initiative to target gamers i yes <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh GSD came in and says, F yeah, Craig. Thanks, GSD. Appreciate that. Retro Meister came in with a $20 super chat. Says also F. Oh, here, let me read this first one real quick. With the 50. It's ridiculous. $50 super chat says 50. morning scholars and welcome back, Craig. 
Uh, I believe we were heading for a Ready Player One Deus Ex nightmare. The elites want to plunge society into economic turmoil worse than 2008 or use Disease X to fearmonger people to retrieve to the metaverse. Also, F Sweet Baby Inc. and FBI and ADL for invading our safe spaces. We do not need uh, an alternate uh, alternative to game awards. Uh, we do need an alternative to game awards focused on actual gamers and having a non-biased voting process, which I'm all for. It's time for another revolution in culture. Right. Thank you, Retro Meister. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, that is incredibly generous. And uh, that is exactly why uh, I encourage everybody to head over to takegamesback.com and become a member over there. Uh, Blabs, will you read off some of these super chats real quick? Um, yeah. Starting, starting with a uh, drive-by commentary right here. Mm -hmm. For ten dollars, he says, "All because the youth were supposed to be weaponized. People enjoy hobbies gets in the way of culture revolution when the puppet masters need misery to control and engineer people's hopes and dreams." Yes. Uh, Bill became a member for seven months, saying the thuttery is evolving. Going back to it's the green true. screen, green screen, uh, Fortnite. It's like <laughs> the thing. It evolved. It evolved. It changed. <laughs> Um, Epsilama says, how is butt streaming okay, but saying statistic isn't? You can't say stats anymore? I didn't know that. Interesting. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Blabs a tarot tart, $5. Rip Craig, I miss him so much. Sometimes it's like I can hear his <laughs> voice. I like pickles, violence, and I'm not saying the rest. Nice try. You, you will never get me. He's been trying to make me say, like, things that are the opposite to, like, patilla and, you know, other words. You okay. Won't. Well, I'm glad Plops the Tower Target is going back in our tower. <laughs> Commander says, oh, Commodore, I should say. Steam Survey says that most monitors are still 1080p 60. That's true. In fact, cable television, I think, is still just 720p. Hmm. Andrew, at this point, where else can we go in terms of graphics? Down? <laughs> Put in 20. You're going to uh, see yeah. AI-driven graphics. That's what you're going to see. Hmm. Jan says, where is my elite rifle battlefront or my audio? Uh, I don't know. Mark of reality. Regulating the audience for not liking a product for the, of the gaming industry is 199% stupid. Everybody, write your congressmen and senators. It's not like they actually listen, sadly, though. Epsilana. Would, would con orgy, orgies, orgies explain the rise of SGW feminism who talk as if men are creep? Creeps also screw Latinx, in my opinion, and that's a swear word for us Latinos. Yes, it should be a swear word, just like cis. The I, I haven't heard about an orgy at GDC, but I have heard about them at uh, uh, cosplay cons and anime conventions. So, and, okay. and it invo usually involves furry suits for some reason. Man, these furries are weird. Last week, I learned that there's like furry butt plugs and stuff. Like, what the fuck? What are we anyway. doing? <laughs> I, I did not expect the word furry butt plug to be stated on the day's show. Or Baldo. <laughs> well, that was that off wasn't stream. on the itinerary. That wasn't on stream. I thought it was about Balto, but no. No, no. Oh, Why have we fallen? Anyway, Joey says, developers who are truly passionate about video games need to create their own studios, and we must support them. That way, we support true gaming while sticking it to the mainstream gaming media. And That's what we're doing. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> I think I think we talked about the Baldo before the stream. <laughs> yes. So, whoops. <laughs> yeah, you just let that one slip. Mm -hmm, oh mm -hmm. no. Uh, True Pop. Hi, man. Blobs definitely seems relieved to not be hosting. Have a good show, everyone. Take games back is a great slogan. Should be on a shirt. Mm hmm. Hatchet for Maybe. a member for two months. We need a counter consultant to SBI. Someone build a Sour Man Corp SMC to counter consult and arm the base devs against Sweet Baby Inc. Mm. Grubbs, do you think that there's an opportunity for that? Just in the opposite of Sweet Baby Inc. to go in and, and make their games more masculine? <laughs> no, not a chance. <laughs> you can't get a government grant for that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Uriah of the House, right? I 100% agree with you. It's to make it's it's to make gaming great again. Yeah. Jared says, ten plus years ago, I freelanced the gaming union for about three years. Does this disqualify me from voting? I'll respect the decision regardless. Very excited. Thanks, Jared. Uh, if it feels ten years ago. You're safe. Mm -hmm. You can't currently be. You cannot currently be a uh, member of the journalist tier. Kyle yeah. says. 
Craig, I, excuse me. Blab said, <gasps> guess the gamer word. I demand reparations for the cost of therapy for being dehumanized. Just kidding. Welcome back. Yeah, I said, I said some words last week by accident, but you know what? I was tripped. I was tripped, I say. Of course you Henry, were. Henry, for $50. Look at 50. it. 50 says, sorry if I missed it. Have you guys talked about RE5 vid that IGN posted saying it can't be remade? Yes, we talked about it on Thursday. Go back and watch last week's stream. We like broke it down to the T. But thank Grums, you what's, what's, your, what's your thoughts on that, Grums? The idea that the uh, that I don't IGN see the headlines. They... I, I didn't look into it because I don't play Resident Evil. And is it saying that they oh. usually they say it's too expensive, you know, to to remake? But I well, think no. it was also the, the fact the... that the the political or the, the the thematic setup of the game is would be problematic today. It's racist is the biggest problem. So Resident Evil Five is too racist to remake. This comes from IGN, who also gave the game a nine out of ten. <laughs> masterpiece i think was uh oh no amazing was amazing. the word right under the nine someone needs to start a a, a gaming l uh twitter channel and just post these articles back Cabrutus, to that. make another steam thing or whatever all the l's oh, i yep. love it that's that's awesome gaming l's would be a great twitter <laughs> handle oh, that's great um, Alex says, for take games back, give me a $5 monthly subscription that I can forget about, like any other streaming service. A support tier, tier without any voting power. Ooh. Okay, I did it. It's right there. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> I did it right there. Yay! It. There it is. There it, nice. At Alex, at Alex and Grum's suggestion, I've done it right there. So there you go. It's, appreciate that. Thank you, Alex, and thanks, Grum's. Boog! These leeches are all tax-funded. Unlimited money. Yes, unlimited power. Spartan bot, is this the sort of crap the money labeled for gender studies in Pakistan went to fund? Remember the U.S. budget from 2022 or 2023? Yeah, that was ridiculous. Uh, Calm says, that. there's a reason we got rid of the Patriot Act. Mm. Uh, Metroid says, it's just like that Tom Cruise movie, the one that predicted the future and you were charged for crimes you were never really committed. But thought. Mm. Yeah, what was, that, what was the movie called? The... Uh... Yeah, Minority Minority Minority. Movie. Minority, yeah. Yes. That's Pooch. Great idea on TGB, and I just signed up. I've also liked your get out and do something attitude, and I'm excited for what you build here. Huzzah! Well, thanks, Das Pooch. Appreciate that. Like I said, we can talk about things all day long. That's fine. That's important. Well, we got to do stuff, too. So let's do it. Mm. Neon says, one cannot end gamers. We respawn. Oh, nice. I love that. That's a great slogan. Gamer talk right there. Love that. Mm. Peter says, question for the panel. Which game had the worst graphics but best gameplay in your opinions? Man, that's tough. It's got to be Probably. one of those nasty games like uh, Thor Fortress. Man, bad bad graphics but good gameplay. Oh, man. I, I, I found that most times graphics... Are we going by today, like looking back yeah, at like the game, or are we graphics? at the time? Yeah, it's tough. Because I would say then just about most of the PS1 games. Yeah, those are bangers. Right. You know, great. They still are fun Dash to play, Bang but Boom. man, I mean, that's like the preteen age of gaming. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Awkward going back looking. To even, even Minecraft, right? Nobody considered those to be great graphics at the time. Yeah. They're, it's an I, aesthetic. I, you could now, say Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII would be a good one to point out. I mean, those graphics are kind of rough. Mario 64. Hmm, kind of rough looking, but it's still fun to play. Like back in the day, you would think all these games were so amazing with their graphics, but now, now it looks like Minecraft in real life. So I don't know. Yeah. I can't really answer that one. Definitely Final Fantasy VII is a, is a great one where you look back on the PlayStation version. I remember, I remember seeing Final Fantasy VII for the first time being like, that's a video game? They can do that in video games? What? And now you look at it and it looks like a crumpled up piece of tinfoil. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, get out of here, Craig. Strange says, we'll tell him how it is, won't we, Blabs? Much love, guys. I love Craig's fighting spirit. Let's take it back. Yes, Yee. let's go. Uh, Stagnant says, how about Customer Revolution Alliance in gaming? The Craig Awards. <laughs> Heck no, his ego would explode. <laughs> Sebastian says, may I have one grant to make all men and women look like the dragon's crown characters in games? Government, please. 
government, please. And Kratos El Gratos came in with the $20 direct donation. Says, I'm so glad Daddy Craig is back in the captain's seat. Glad the tyrant was out of control while being drunk on power last week. Please never leave again, Craig. Hashtag I survived Blabs week. We need a t-shirt to, to serve as a reminder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Big Top came in with the five says, hey, yo, Craig, Blabs finally untied you from the from the basement. <laughs> yes, yeah, I got it. He was out. chained up in the radiator and everything. Annie came in with the 10 says, Craig, uh, while you were out, a whistleblower was assassinated. That's too coincidental for that for that to occur. Uh, do you have a barcode on your head? <laughs> also, Blabs was a uh, Blabs was uh, tried to say words like like salt, uh, like vinegar last week. If you read this, we got uh, we got got two. OK, Annie, thank you very much. You know what this is. Do you own a lot of Boeing stock, Craig? Uh, no, I do not. But I saw that happen. That seemed mm -hmm. a little suspicious. Yeah, we talked about it on Clown World uh, last Friday. Wild shit. Mercenary came in and says, sorry, Flash, uh, but if if you think this whole thing with DHS and such is only a minor part, you have no idea how deep this rabbit hole goes or who's behind it. Uh, Me? It's biblical, my man. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Uh, if, if, you knew, if you knew what I knew, you would freak out. I wish I could elaborate. I, and then he followed up, says, I don't trust any awards because, like you said, it's absolutely rigged like this, like uh, certain other things are rigged. And are told I'm not. It's 100% legit until I get perfect 100% transparency. I don't trust anything. Oh, that's also one thing that I want to do. Uh, also, with uh, taking games back is I want to be transparent with the voting. I think it'd be very cool to pull up, say, you know, uh, whatever game uh, won with 46% of the vote. I think that'd be like, and, th and then actually show the actual, uh, you know, let's say, hey, Ember, Ember won game of the year. Congratulations! <laughs> you know? Oh, thank you, thank you very much. There you go. And you want to talk way, about you want to talk about how deep it goes. A lot of this is all about shifting behaviors and social engineering. When it comes to a lot of the shit that they put into the games, like the cisgender stuff, and and I think uh, they're really mad because like it's not working. No, it's just pissing people off. And you know, so and now you're seeing the direct the results in movies, and you're going to see it in games, but games take a little longer because the dev cycle is longer. Tom came in and says, sadly, SBI is just the tip of the iceberg. Ten years ago, people who tried to take this approach uh, in the FBI were laughed out of the room. Now all these organizations are, are infiltrated by these crazies. It's fucking sad. Kratos came in with the 10, says, movie pitch in the 90s, uh, in the 90s, movie guy voice. In the not-so-distant future, fascism has gripped society, and all major forms of media have become arms of propaganda. In this world, the last remaining stronghold of freedom are gamers. This is their fight. Thank you, Kratos. Appreciate that. And uh, Bizarre Star says, it's so obvious uh, Merc uh, Mercante wants to be the next Anita or Zoe, not... Uh, not surprised the self-proclaimed quote-unquote punk slut <laughs> gross uh, wants to be like the women who bang guys for, for positive press. <laughs> Jesus. And Abdulio came in with the two says, Greetings, Grums! While I didn't grow up with the old games of Blizzard, it is still assuring to see that one of the original gaming devs hasn't gone insane and forsaken us. So many old devs have fallen deep into the Kool-Aid and it's very disheartening. Oh, there's more of us. A lot of them are in hiding. Don't don't despair. They need to come out and say something. I, yeah, like what's what what's the issue with that? Like, is it is it strictly like the bosses or is it HR? Are they scared of being called an istophobe or whatever? Like, why? How come more aren't speaking out? Are they I not call fighting? It, I call it social scared? terrorism. Social terrorism, and and you don't have to threaten the whole company. You just have to find the HR director. You just have to find the marketing director. You just have to get, you know, one person into a corner and um, and suddenly you have an ally, right? Because you you threaten them with cancellation. That's how it works. Which is just like what the SBI lady said. Go to your marketing guy and, you know, terrify yeah, him. I'm not making this happen. up. They literally said this. Yeah. It's in a yeah. presentation. You can go watch it. This is exactly mm. the way it works. Mm. Watch it. What a mess. What a fucking mess. I, I said this before. Video games are a mess right now. Um, do, Grums, do you see a way... To get out of this like what, what does like, it take it, it's going to take a, a a cycle or two because games take a lot longer you're you know i said 
in movies right now, you're starting starting to see the economic repercussions of this, right? And it, I think in games, it, it's happening slower for two reasons. One is games take longer to make. It takes seven years to do an original IP game now from scratch. Uh, you know, and the other reason is, is that it's really the story components that are the most infected. You know, not the gameplay, uh, not the programming teams. It's really the writing and story component. And that's not like in a movie where it's like 100% of what you do or the vast majority of what you do is storytelling. That's a, a, a component of a video game. And so I think that's why it's slower in games, uh, but it's going to get worse before it gets better. They're circling the wagons right now. They're doubling down and it's getting worse internally for teams right now. Are we looking at uh, five years, eight years? I mean, are I we going to be looking? You're looking at like two cycles. So that's going to be, I mean, these games are already in production. So I think you're looking at four years, three to four years, maybe a little longer. It depends before you see any sort of economic impact here that would force change. Uh, maybe, you know, because these games are already funded. So it doesn't matter that ESG is drying up and all that stuff. These games are funded. You're going to see the stuff come out. Uh, it, luckily, it's going to be mostly just on the story end. You know, it's not going to uh, the gameplay stuff. AAA has a different problem. They have a problem with lack of innovation and churning out the same stuff and um, and playing it way too safe. But uh, but you're mostly going to see it on the story side, and it's going to be a, a long time, unfortunately. Mm. That's, that's honestly so disheartening to hear. It's so well, disheartening to hear. It, okay, it is, but it isn't because the majority of devs don't care they're they're not in they're not into this politics stuff it's really a handful of activists that came up through dei programs like that's how they got in right and it's from it's from the funding at the top down level the funding's drying up uh and layoffs are happening and you know only the most productive are going to stick around when when times are tough in the gaming industry so most of these activists uh do more talking than they do developing uh, so hopefully that gets weeded out and the culture comes back i'm heartened by the fact that in gdc there's a huge number of great topics out there that are high information and so yeah i think game devs aren't having it uh they're just keeping their heads down right now and we'll just we just gotta wait Dude came in and says, last time I checked, Crash was owned by Activision, which means it's now owned by Microsoft. Same with Spyro, just more classic characters that will that will stay on the shelf by mismanagement of Phil Spencer. Thank you, dude. Appreciate that. Uh, appreciate everybody's support everywhere, whether you're watching over on Rumble, whether you're watching on uh, YouTube or wherever you're tuning in. Jared says, how was your vacation, Craig? Blabs, Helldivers. Uh, it was great, by the way. Thanks, Jared. Blabs, Helldivers 2 ended up being a lot of fun, and I love the fact that this game uh, so far has been apolitical. I wish Battlefront Collection came out and did better than it did. Yep, I agree. Appreciate that. Kratos uh, says, your vote should be uh, prorated, prorated based on how long they've been a member, so you can't just join the day, day before they vote. Thanks, Kratos. Appreciate that. Uh, dude says, of course. Yeah, I mean, you get a fraction of a vote. <laughs> uh, dude says, uh, of course, the one world government types would uh, hate most Americans. They want uh, drones to follow orders, not be individuals with their own wants and desires. The normies are rejecting it subconsciously. Thank you, dude. Appreciate that. And oh, uh, it says the only terms that should be non-negotiable is that the entire talk be released to the public uh, if any if any of the comes come uh, come out of it. Are you talking about the uh, talk with Alyssa? Yeah, I agree. Hundred thing. 100% needs to be released in, in its entirety. Uh, Mighty Megatron says, they want us to live in their bubble. Yes, 100%. And Left Cross says, uh, Alyssa wanted uh, wanted punch people, want up. Alyssa want to punch people from behind, uh, behind a protected barrier, and then LeBron flop when people question her. <laughs> 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 then Lone Wolf came into the two, says, insert witty comment. And uh, Blake says, somehow Craig has returned. Guys, thank you very much for your support. All the Rumble Rants, Super Chats, and direct donations today. Uh, genuinely appreciate it. All right, we got to roll. We've been we've gone a little bit longer than usual, but the show continues to extend a little bit more every single day with all these crazy topics. Um, I would like to personally thank Grums for coming on. Grums, I, I uh, I've been excited to have you on for a yeah. while. Uh, it's it's amazing to hear your perspective. Uh, big fan of you and your work and what you're doing. And uh, I just want to say thank you for fighting the good fight because uh, you are seen as a beacon of sanity for a lot of people in a video game industry that seems the most insane ever. Oh, well, uh, that that's a lot, but I'm just trying to do a little bit and do my part in it, uh, make games that aren't infested with this stuff. And I appreciate the efforts you're doing too. So you're right. I, it, we have to take action. We, we can't just sit here and talk about it. 
Yep. That that's the goal. That is the goal. Got to take action. Uh, Flash, you got anything going on? You want to you want to promote? No, not at this moment. Just check out the channel. Sounds good. Well, obviously, I like everyone to head over to uh, takegamesback.com. Would really appreciate it if you guys would uh, head over there and just explore it. Consider consider the opportunity of uh, of helping restore and and create a new uh, a new uh, opportunity to crown the best and worst in the video game space. That's something that I definitely want to do as well. Is is really highlight the absolute worst games. <laughs> so I think that's funny as shit. So head over there once again. Go to uh, takegamesback.com and uh, learn about it. I spent all weekend doing this, all weekend putting it up there. So go over there and uh, um, get going. So appreciate everybody popping in. Do us a favor. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Join us Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Central Time. Go follow Blabs over on YouTube and over on Kick where she looks at hot girls all the time. And Maybe I'll find her, the booty girl. <laughs> you can f go find Alyssa as well. Go find, go find her ethos. Nobody page. wants to see that. Yes. Atune Flux says, will I be playing over on the Side Scrollers Plays channel? Yes, I'll be live over on the Side Scrollers Plays channel. Join me over there. I'll be playing Donkey Kong Country 2 today uh, over uh, about 2 o'clock today. So join me over there. It should be a great time. Uh, with that said, guys, thank you very much once again. Remember, people are going to try to keep you down. Don't let them. You guys got a goal. Go get it. Have a great day, guys. See you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.